But then uh, we must remember, we must not put the blame, uh, everything on past life karma, you know. Because the law of karma does not only concern past life karma, it also concerns present life karma. If you say that everything is due to past life karma, then we don't do anything, uh, just sit down and wait for karma to bring us everything. Uh. Uh, then, uh, evidently, uh, we can see uh, that it's not the way life works. Uh. A very good example, uh, uh, you can see, uh, is for, for example, you think of a student in the Form 5, uh, trying to study to get 10 A's. Uh. So we consider three types of students. The first one, uh, he couldn't be bothered to study. Uh, but he goes around praying. Uh, he goes to this temple, go to that Datokong and go everywhere uh, praying, uh, trying to get 10 A's. But he refused to study. So can he get 10 A's? Evidently he won't, isn't it? Why? Because he doesn't put in the effort, he doesn't put in the karma. Uh, he only relies on past karma. The second student, uh, he studies very hard. But unfortunately he is born not very smart. Uh. Born not very smart, but he works very hard, burns the midnight oil, uh, stays up to 12 o'clock, sleeps 6 hours, uh, and every day he studies uh, very hard. Perhaps he might get 2 or 3 A's, but he won't get 10 A's because he's not very smart. Uh, uh. Uh, so the third student uh, is born very intelligent, very smart, and on top of that, uh, he studies very hard. Uh, that is the type of person uh, who will get 10 A's. Uh. So, the, the uh, first, um, the second category of student, uh, he studied very hard uh, that his present life karma, but he did not get the support uh, of past life karma, he didn't have the intelligence uh, from past life to support him. That's why he did not succeed. Whereas the third uh, type of student, uh, he had the support from the previous life karma, uh, being born very smart, uh, and uh, also worked the present life karma. Both working together, uh, past life karma plus present life karma can get us what we want. Uh, there's something we have to remember. And then uh, because of that, uh, the Buddha said uh, that uh, we should strive. Uh, the Buddha said, uh, the Buddhas only show the way. Striving should be done by you lah. So like, if we uh, understand the Dhamma, uh, we want to walk the good way, uh, the, gum, the Dhamma only guides us lah. We have to do it ourselves lah. That's why people say Buddhism is a do-it-yourself religion. Now, in one sutta, the Buddha said, uh, uh, concerning the doing of karma, before we do any karma, we have to reflect this karma that I'm going to do, either through the body, through the speech, or through the mind, uh, is it going to harm somebody? Or is it going to harm myself? If it's going to harm somebody or harm myself, I should not do it. But if it's going to benefit some other person or being, or it's going to benefit myself, uh, then I should do it, and do it again and again. So that is before you do the karma, you must reflect. And then even while we are doing the karma, the Buddha said, we should also reflect in the midst of doing the karma, we must reflect whether what I'm doing now is right or not, is right or wrong. Is right, I continue to do. If it's wrong, I should stop immediately. Uh, because sometimes before doing, you forgot to contemplate. So while you are doing, uh, you contemplate. Or sometimes before doing you forgot, during the doing also you forgot, then after doing that karma, we still should reflect back and think carefully that what you did eh, yesterday or three days ago or one week ago or one month ago, eh, whether that was correct or not, uh, whether you should have done it or you should not have done it. Uh. So when we reflect this way, eh, then eh, it's uh, very useful eh, to always eh, live our life uh, very skillfully uh, because if we live our life very skillfully then uh, we will avoid unnecessary suffering. Uh. Uh. Another very good criterion uh, uh, of karma is whether a karma is good karma that should be done or a karma is wrong uh, that should not be done is the Buddha said if it leads to an increase in wholesome states of mind uh, or a decrease in unwholesome states of mind in yourself or in others, eh, then you should do it. That is good karma. 
Uh, good karma leads to an increase in wholesome states in yourself or others or a decrease in unwholesome states in yourself or others. What is uh, wholesome states? Wholesome states are good states of mind, uh, happy states of mind, uh, like um, non-attachment, uh, goodwill instead of ill will, uh, tranquil mind instead of a restless mind, uh, not being jealous of others, uh, etc. So, um, this kind of wholesome state of mind uh, gives you peace, uh, gives you a happy state. Uh, whereas unwholesome states of mind uh, are those states that make you agitated, make you unhappy. Uh, uh, so, uh, that is a very good criterion uh, to remember. Uh, on the other hand, uh, if the converse, uh, then it is bad karma or evil karma. Uh, wrong karma or unwholesome karma leads to a decrease in wholesome states la, or an increase in unwholesome states. La. Uh, that kind of karma we should avoid. La. Now, in one sutta, the Buddha said uh, that not all suffering uh, is due to karma. Sometimes uh, uh, we can have some suffering, uh, but it is possible it might not be due to karma. Uh, besides karma, other factors that could cause us suffering uh, could be, for example, the weather. For example, uh, Kuching, suddenly you get uh, what pollution index of 1000. That <laughs> causes you a lot of suffering. Huh? That is not your personal karma. That might be some due to some other factors. Lah, huh? So it might be due to weather. Another one might be due to your body, eh? unbalance of wind or unbalance of heat or bile or phlegm, etc. Eh? That also could cause you suffering. Another one could be due to carelessness. Eh? Another could be due to accident. But usually a lot of things happen because of karma. Eh? So, for example, eh? if a person is careless eh? uh, while well, uh, he drinks and drives, eh? Maybe he gets involved in an accident and he passes away. If it is due to his carelessness uh, or accident, uh, that means his karma as a human being is not finished. Uh, then he will probably come back reborn as a human being. But if it is due to karma uh, that he has finished uh, his karma as a human being, uh, then he gets involved in an accident uh, then he won't be reborn as a human being. Uh, he will be reborn in another plane of existence. Uh, uh. So that is one other thing to remember, not everything is due to karma. Now, there are five grave karmic offenses, like where the most serious karmic offenses are mentioned in the suttas. The first one is if you uh, shed uh, intentionally, like purposely shed the blood uh, of a Buddha. Uh, that means you harm a Buddha, like that's the first one. They will definitely uh, bring you to hell uh, the next lifetime. The second one is you kill an uh, arahan. Uh, killing an arahan. That's also very serious. Uh, another one is you kill your own mother. The fourth one, you kill your own father. The last one, you have a group of monks uh, living in harmony. Uh, you go and, and um, split them. Uh, you know, you tell lies or you create disharmony yeah, and make the monks uh, divide. Uh. Uh, these five types of offenses uh, can bring you to hell, uh, the next birth, and make you stay there for a long time. The working of karma is very complex, uh, the Buddha said uh, in one sutta, that four things uh, you should not think too much about. If you think too much about these four things, uh, you'll go a bit cuckoo. Uh. <laughs> one is uh, the power of a Buddha. Second one is the depth of jhana. The third one is karma. The fourth one is speculation about the future of the world. Uh, these four things. Now why is it karma? It's not to be thought of. Because karma is very complex, you know. The working of karma depends not only on your present lifetime, uh, it depends on many, many lifetimes, uh, unsettled accounts, uh, karmic accounts from many, many lifetimes have to be taken into account. 
on top of that nah, if you create a karma what uh, the the result of it nah, depends on your state of mind at that moment you know uh, yeah. and also the state of mind of the other person you do a, uh, the karma to for example if you uh, make an offering uh, to a murderer to a criminal to a evil person then uh, your merit uh, is very small but you make an offering uh, to a holy man uh, then uh, your merit uh, your blessings is very great uh. Uh, similarly the converse if you kill the holy man uh, then your karmic offense is very great uh. whereas uh, you kill a mosquito uh, <laughs> karma not so bad uh. Because I'm not encouraging you to kill a mosquito. Uh. <laughs> and because working of karma is very complex, uh, sometimes uh, we find it a bit hard to understand, you know. Why? Because sometimes we see uh, that there are certain persons, uh, they, uh, you consider them as evil persons, uh, uncouth, rough persons, uh, uh, very stingy, uh, very offensive. And yet the fellow is having a good life, you know, driving a Mercedes Benz or or he might even be doing uh, evil things uh, like uh, um, uh, peddling drugs or something uh, and yet he's having a very good life uh, sometimes this uh, could be due to his good karma from the past uh, and that good karma from the past life uh, is supporting him and he, now he's creating a lot of bad karma which has not ripened yet so because of that uh, we find it very hard sometimes uh, to see, you know, sometimes uh, people comment, uh, this world is not fair. Uh, and the good people uh, are not the ones uh, who are happy. Uh, you see a lot of evil people are happy. Uh, so that's because the working of karma is very difficult uh, to, uh, to, to see. Uh, unless we have psychic power uh, and we can look into the past, uh, look into his past life, uh, then only we can understand. Uh, there's one very important sutta in the Anguttara Nikaya 5.5.43 where the Buddha said uh, uh, there are certain things in the world uh, that everybody wants uh, that everybody um, values uh, but very hard to get uh. for example uh, being beautiful having a very healthy body being very happy uh, having a long life and after you pass away to have a good rebirth la. these kind of things uh, everybody wants uh, but are very hard to get la. and the Buddha said these kind of things uh, are not to be got uh, only by prayers and vows la. or even thinking about them every day if you only pray and make vows uh, it's useless la. Uh, you have to walk the way uh, that brings you to what you want uh. Buddha said, if only by praying and making vows, uh, you can get what you want. Uh, why is there so much suffering in the world? Uh, There's a very good example. Is just now you mentioned about that student uh, trying to get 10 A's, but he doesn't want to study. Uh, he goes and prays and make vows and and goes from Datukong to Datukong. Uh, and yet, uh, he does not get his 10 A's. Uh. So what the Buddha means uh, is that we have to walk the path uh, that brings us to what we want. Uh. That means uh, if you want long life, uh, then you must not kill. Uh, if, you, if you don't kill, uh, then you don't even have to pray for it. Uh, long life will come naturally. Of course, it's natural for most people uh, when they are suffering uh, to pray. Uh. And sometimes when we pray, uh, our prayers are answered. But actually... According to the Buddha's teachings, our prayers are answered uh, mainly because we have that supporting karma. If the supporting karma is not there, uh, sometimes, for example, a person uh, might be very, very rich, uh, and then suddenly he gets cancer. And then he goes all around the world uh, to get the, the best specialist in the world. Uh. But if his karma is not supporting him, uh, even the best doctors uh, come from America, UK and Europe, uh, still uh, that person will die. Whereas another person might be very poor and perhaps also have cancer. But if the karma is supporting him, uh, he might not even have the money to go to some specialist center. Somebody recommend him some herb or ask him to drink urine and then he recovers. See? <laughs> so, 
Uh, so that's how uh, karma is so important uh, in supporting us. Now, there's another very important sutta, Sangyutta Nikaya 42.8.6. One day the Buddha came to a certain village of Brahmins, and these Brahmins came to talk to the Buddha. So the Buddha came to this Brahmin village, and the Brahmins came to talk to the Buddha, and they said to the Buddha, he said, Lord, there is a type of Brahmins in the West. Eh? They have a peculiar uh, tradition eh? besides the tradition of carrying water and bathing in the river three times a day. Eh? They believe eh, that when their relative passes away, eh, they should immediately eh, take the corpse out, out of the house, eh, outside, eh, under the open sky, and hold the corpse high up, you know. Then they make the corpse uh, face heaven. Then they shout uh, the name of the person who passed away, you know, and ask him to go to heaven. And they believe, uh, because that man is facing heaven, he can see heaven, and they shout to his soul, uh, his soul will naturally go up to heaven, uh, because they help to direct him to heaven, you see. So these Brahmins asked the Buddha, I said, Bhagavan, uh, now that you are here with us, uh, you are an Arahan, Samasam Buddha, I think you can help all the human beings uh, in the world uh, go to heaven. That's an interesting question, isn't it? We also like to know whether the Buddha can use his psychic power uh, to help all of us go to heaven. So the Buddha said, um, I will ask you a question first. Uh, please answer me first. Uh. So the Buddha said, suppose a man uh, came to the edge of a lake, uh, a deep lake, and he took a rock uh, in two hands. Uh, and he held up this rock and threw it in the middle of the lake. So what happens? The rock will sink into the water. As the rock is sinking into the water, all the people come together and shout at the rock, you know, and praise the rock and ask the rock to float up to the surface and float to the shore. So the Buddha asked the Brahmins, is it possible for the rock to float up? Then they thought for a while and then they say it's not possible uh, because the rock is something heavy. Eh? It will naturally sink in the water. How can it float up? So the Buddha said, in the same way, suppose a man eh, has done a lot of evil. Eh? He has not done any good. Eh? Killed a lot of people, uh, cheated a lot of people, etc., etc. Eh? And when he passed away, eh, everybody came comes along uh, and shouts and asks him to go to heaven, is it possible? Then after thinking for a while, uh, they said they think it's not possible because this person has done so much evil, uh, like that stone, uh, he will sink into a uh, bad rebirth. Uh. So the Buddha said, then, uh, the Buddha said, suppose now another man comes to the edge of the lake uh, and he takes a cup, a uh, uh, container, and the container contains oil. Uh, and he throws the container with the oil into the middle of the lake. What happens? The container or the cup will start to sink. But the oil being light will float to the surface. As the oil is floating up to the surface, suppose all the people came along and shouted at the oil and asked the oil to sink into the water. Is it possible for the oil to sink? And after thinking for a while, they said, no, it's not possible because oil is light. It will naturally float up. So the Buddha said, in the same way, if a person has done a lot of good, has never harmed any living being, when he passes away, even if a lot of people were to come together and shout and curse him, ask him to go to hell, is it possible that he will go to hell? So they said, it's not possible. Being a good man, he will naturally go up to heaven. So by answering these questions, these people understood what the Buddha meant, uh, that the Buddha himself uh, cannot help us. Uh. We, whether we rise or we sing uh, depends on our karma. That's why Buddhism uh, is a little bit unlike other religions in the sense that we don't say uh, by becoming a Buddhist uh, that heaven is guaranteed for you. Uh. You, whether you go to heaven or you go elsewhere, uh, depends on your own karma. Uh. In Buddhism, uh, we cannot bribe heaven. Uh. Had to open the door for us. Eh? Uh. Now, concerning this, eh, you find, eh, in, like in the Six Patriarch Sutra, somebody also asked the Buddha uh, in the 
Liu Chu Tan Jing asked the Buddha, um, is it true uh, that uh, some people say when we recite the Buddha's name, uh, we can be reborn in the pure land? And the six patriarchs said, if your heart is pure, the pure land is very near. If your heart is impure or evil, the pure land is very far. And he said, if people in the east, uh, by reciting the Buddha's name, can be reborn in the west, then what do the people in the west do? Uh, so from here, it's quite obvious uh, that our mind, our heart uh, is very important. If we have a good heart, then the pure land is very near. If you have a bad heart, an evil heart, uh, pure land is very far. Now, another thing, the karma, the result of karma is different uh, for different people, you know. Uh, as I said before, it depends on the person who does the karma and on the other person uh, that the karma is done to. Uh, and um, it depends on uh, a few conditions. Uh. So, if we... Um, uh, you see, this uh, a good example is, uh, for example, if we plant uh, rambutan seeds, uh, firstly, we don't expect to get durian fruits. Uh, if you plant rambutan seed, uh, you will only get rambutan. And also, the amount of rambutan that you are going to get uh, depends on several conditions. Uh, some people plant uh, rambutan seed, they get a tree uh, which bears very little fruit. And some people plant... Uh, I mind even sometimes the tree can be very short, uh, it bears a lot of fruit. Uh, and also whether the fruit uh, is sweet or sour also depends on other conditions. Uh. So in the same way, to give a very good example, uh, the Buddha gave uh, this example. Uh, suppose now you are at the back of your house doing some cooking. Uh, then a beggar comes uh, and trying to ask for some money, he comes from the front of your house, he sees nobody. And then he walks into your hall, in your front hall, and he finds ten dollars or hundred dollars on the table. And then he sees nobody around, he pockets the ten dollars or hundred dollars and he walks out. Just at that time, perhaps you, you came out from the back huh, and you saw this beggar walking away and you saw your money missing from the table. Most people, what they'll do huh, is either they shout and catch that beggar or they phone the police huh, and get the beggar arrested, right? So what happens? That beggar ends up in jail, right? But suppose a very famous man came along, suppose some politician, some Tan Sri or some Dato, uh, to visit the constituency. In the same way, he comes to the front of your house. Then you saw him walking away and saw your money missing. Would you call the police? Uh? Maybe somebody like, uh, maybe our Prime Minister. <laughs> you think if I call the police, uh, maybe he won't get jail, I get jail. <laughs> I don't know. So, See, two persons uh, doing the same karma, the result uh, can be different. Uh. So, because of that, the Buddha said, uh, it is possible uh, that a person with very little good karma, uh, who has done a lot of evil deeds, uh, that when he does another small evil deed, the small evil deed uh, can even pull him down to hell. Whereas a person uh, with a lot of blessings, uh, he does the same evil deed. Uh, perhaps the Buddha said uh, he might feel sorry uh, for a few days. Uh, and after the few days, uh, there is no more karmic debt to pay. Uh, so from here, uh, you see, if we have a lot of good karma, it supports us. And even we do some evil, uh, it becomes minimized. And on the other hand, uh, if we have a lot of blessings, if we do some good, uh, then it multiplies, you know. Uh, how do we overcome past evil karma? To overcome past evil karma, the Buddha said, uh, we have to do a lot of good karma now. And the Buddha gave a very beautiful simile uh, of salt and water. The, in the Buddha's days, uh, they did not have fine salt as we have now, you know. They had lumps of salt. So the Buddha said, suppose a man uh, took a lump of salt uh, and he put into a cup of water and he stirred the water uh, and he drank. The water will be very salty, right? But the Buddha said, if a person took the same size of a uh, lump of salt uh, and put it into the river and stirred the river water and you drink the river water, it's not salty, right? Why? Because in the river there's a lot of water in the 
uh, cup, uh, there's so little water. Now the Buddha said the water represents the good karma, the salt represents the evil karma. So when we have a lot of good karma, it dilutes our evil karma. Uh, that is why it's very important uh, uh, to that we do a lot of good uh, to overcome our past evil karma. Uh, what is past, uh, we can't do anything about. We can only do, uh, we only take care of the present. Uh. So to take care of the present, we have to do a lot of good. Uh. Another thing is that all karma that we do, uh, or each karma that we do, uh, has a potential to ripen. However, uh, not every karma will ripen. The Buddha said if every karma will ripen, uh, then we cannot get out of samsara, we cannot get out of the round of rebirths. Why? Because our karmic uh, account uh, is so great, uh, we have been in the round of rebirths, uh, uncountable uh, uh, number of lifetimes. Uh. So, if everything had to be paid, uh, then uh, we would not be able to get out of samsara. But however, because not all karma has to ripen, uh, then uh, we can get out of samsara. And a very good example is the example of Angulimala, the bandit uh, who killed uh, hundreds of people, you know. This bandit lived in the forest uh, and he was so strong and powerful and quick. Uh, he killed many, many people who passed through the forest. And that is partly because he had very good karma from the past. Uh. So after doing a lot of killing, uh, the king uh, was asked uh, by the people uh, to get an army to go and uh, kill him because people were afraid to pass that mountain, you know, because so many people were already killed. And the Buddha saw that this person uh, could be helped. So the Buddha went to the hills uh, alone and he walked through the hills alone. And this bandit Angulimala, he, was, he, was, he saw the Buddha walking. And he saw the Buddha was alone. Uh, he thought, oh, it's very easy to kill this, this man. And um, he had the habit, uh, after killing people, uh, he had the habit of cutting off their thumbs, you know, their thumbs and their fingers, uh, and make it into a garland and wear it around his neck. That's why his name was uh, uh, Finger Garland. Finger Garland. Because Anguli is finger. Uh, Anguli Mala. Mala is a garland. Uh, so he was very well-known bandit. So when the Buddha walked through the hills, uh, this bandit, uh, Gulimala, he came from behind. And he ran after the Buddha with his uh, knife uh, and his bow and arrow and all that, all arm. He ran behind the Buddha and was coming behind. He wanted to kill the Buddha. But even though he ran very fast, he found that he couldn't get near the Buddha because the Buddha used his psychic power. Uh, and how, however fast he ran, uh, he found he couldn't get near to the Buddha at all. So he stopped. Then he shouted at the Buddha. And he asked the Buddha to stop. And the Buddha turned around and looked at him. And the Buddha told him, I have stopped. But you have not stopped. Then he thought to himself, why this man says I have not stopped? He has stopped. Then he realized uh, that the Buddha was a holy man. So he threw aside his weapons. Uh, and then he knelt down uh, in front of the Buddha and uh, asked the Buddha to explain then the Buddha told him, I have stopped from harming all beings, but you have not stopped. Then the Buddha taught him some Dhamma, and after listening to the Dhamma from the Buddha, he changed completely. And he asked the Buddha to allow him to become a monk. So the Buddha walked back to the, walked back down the hill, back to the monastery, and Angulimala followed. And then after that, Angulimala became a monk. So the king uh, was asked to go and kill Angulimala, but the, the reputation of Angulimala was so fierce uh, that even the king was scared, uh, even with his army. Uh. So he went to see the Buddha in the forest monastery, hoping to get some blessing from the Buddha so that he won't get killed. So he went to see the Buddha, and the Buddha saw him all in armor, all armed uh, with his army. And the Buddha asked him, where are you going? So he said, I have been asked by a lot of people uh, to go and catch and kill this Angulimala. So that's why I was planning to go. Uh. And then um, the Buddha told the king, suppose you saw the Angul Angulimala now uh, as a monk, uh, 
how would you react? Then the king said, if I saw Angulimala as a monk, say that's um, something unimaginable. Lah. But if I saw him as a monk, lah, I would uh, pay respect to him lah, and support him lah, like other monks. Then the Buddha pointed out to Angulimala, you know, he said, that is Angulimala. So when the king turned around and saw Angulimala, all oh, his hair stood up. Lah. <laughs> this man uh, is so fierce uh, that one look at him uh, all their hairs they will stand up uh. so then the, the Buddha uh, pacified the king uh, said don't, don't, don't get, be afraid uh. he's a changed person uh. he's no more the same man and the king found it hard to believe uh, that then uh, since the Buddha said uh, that is Angulimala uh, then the, he had to believe uh. so after that uh, he supported this Angulimala but Angulimala, because his karma of uh, killing so many uh, humans uh, was so great uh, that after he became a monk, he went on his arms round, pin the butt. Uh, sometimes uh, people would throw rocks at him, you know. And sometimes he would come back uh, with his head uh, full of blood. Uh, and he'll come and uh, with tears in his eyes, uh, he'll come and see the Buddha. And the Buddha asked him uh, to bear it, told him, Angulimala, you have to bear this. Uh, if you don't strive hard now, uh, the hells and all that waiting for you. <laughs> then, then he probably knew. Uh. So he strove very hard, you know. And then he became an arahant. And after he became an arahant, uh, he see, imagine uh, all that karma that you are supposed to pay back, uh, didn't have to pay back, right? Uh, so that shows uh, if we strive very hard, uh, then uh, we can shorten, you know, uh, all the accounts to talk. 